What up, what up? Welcome on in to Inside Baylor Sports, the official daily podcast of Baylor Athletics. On today's show, we preview the weekend ahead in Baylor Athletics, which includes softball, baseball, and golf. Plus, Baylor men's basketball also adds another front court player in Jalen Celestine. All that and more coming up on the show. Don't forget you can catch Inside Baylor Sports every weekday. You can also watch the video version for free over at BaylorPlus.com and on the Baylor Athletics YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, rate, and review the pod. Follow Baylor Plus today on X, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. It's the official content network of Baylor Athletics. Think Netflix for your Baylor Bears. Download the app on your mobile device and sign up for your free seven-day trial today at BaylorPlus.com. It's Friday, May 17th. Justin Hoff alongside the Baylor Bear insider, Jerry Hill. And Jerry... Uh, you're getting ready to take a road trip to softball. We'll talk about them in, in just a little bit. I hope you uh, uh, enjoy that humidity because it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot there in Louisiana, but uh, you like that, right? I I was a little concerned when I looked at the weather forecast and I was like, supposed to rain tonight, tomorrow, Saturday. By Sunday, it'll be clear, but it's like, and you got to get some games in sometime. Uh, I think they have to be finished by Monday, if I'm right. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it'll be really humid. Um, I guess I'll just have to soothe myself with some uh, little seafood, little Cajun food. Yeah, you might be in there for a while. We'll uh, we'll jump back to softball here in just a little bit. But at the top of the show here, want to talk Jalen Celestine, the latest member of the Baylor men's basketball team. And you think about this offseason, man, it's been a good one for Scott Drew. You think about Jeremy Roach, nor Chad O'Meara, and now Jalen Celestine. Jalen's coming to us from California. And it's funny, he's kind of, you know, there's there's no true replacement for Jalen Bridges, but you kind of, you know, he's going to fill some of that role. And you go Jalen for another Jalen, but Scott Drew just adds again. And it's great to have another Jalen on the team because uh, Jalen Bridges, man, he was good last year. But Jalen Celestine, this is a shooter, Jerry, over 40% from three. Uh, he's battled some injuries and in some of his time at Cal, but he's a couple years away from his injuries now. So he should be 100%. But uh, adding another shooter on the perimeter, someone who can stretch the floor, someone who can knock down that corner three. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy, I believe he finished like second in the Pac-12 in three-point shooting percentage last year. So you're getting a guy <clears throat> with a lot of starts, uh, you know, in P4, P5, uh, 45 starts in Pac-12. So um, obviously a veteran, a guy that's been through it. Uh, like you said, he was injured, I guess, a couple of years ago, uh, but played last year, was fine. So, uh, yeah, I think he just adds another really good piece. Uh, Justin, I think he's a guy that could maybe even play a little bit of two, but probably three, um, you know, so I, I think he gives you uh, a lot, a lot of that scoring punch outside punch, uh, you know, the Jalen provided last year, this Jalen will provide this year. So that is interesting, kind of the we're not having much of a transition there, Jalen to Jalen. Yeah, and he should have a couple years to play based on uh, the COVID year, the redshirt year. So he should have two to play. Six, seven, two, fifteen. A guard really played that four spot. He's from Ontario, Canada, and so you think about the the lineage for Scott Drew in Canada. We go up there as well. You think about Brady Heslip, who's done a lot of coaching now in Canada, been on the national team there, and also Devante Bandu from Canada. Uh, we like the North. Oh, Canada, we we can do that. Oh, Canada. Yeah. Um, you know, and that that is actually in Baptist hymnals. I don't know if you knew that, Justin, but Oh, Canada, the song is actually in the Baptist hymnal, at least the one that I had. So, uh, yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, we've obviously had no issue with um, not just Canada, but international. You know, I think we've had a lot of success, um, you know, getting guys from there. Um, you know, and I, I think obviously he's a guy that, you know, like I said, he's from Ontario, but he's had a ton of experience at Cal. So yeah, I like this. Um, I like what he can bring to the table and I should have probably researched this Justin, but there was another, uh, Canadian guard and I'm trying to, it was a point guard and I can't think of his name, but, uh, we've, we've had several from Canada, not, not Bandu. It was before that. Kenny Cherry. Yes, Kenny Cherry. Montreal. So, what's uh, what's that? Montreal. So you Montreal. got a French. Yeah, you yeah. can talk some French there. I've been a, a Montreal subway 
not a good place to be because everything's French. I feel like I was in France and it was a scary spot. Not good. <laughs> well, I, you know, again, you know, having the success that we've had there and, and being able to get another Canadian, I really like it. Um, you know, we, it, again, it just adds another piece. Um, they have done, they've really had a lot of success in, in the portal this year and bringing in some real, like you said, Norchad Omir, uh, Jeremy Roach, uh, you know, and now Celestine, I, man, um, all of the things are coming together. You kind of wondered how all this, uh, you know, I mentioned, I think at one point I mentioned, I was a little worried because all the coaches were leaving and, you know, how's recruiting going to go? How's the portal going to go? And Scott Drew answered that, you know, he went out and got three, you know, really um, amazing players that are, that are all going to be great additions to this team. So I think, uh, uh, you know, that 24, 25 roster, it looks really good right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I talk about where I'm from a lot, but, uh, I'm proud of being from Michigan, but up there in Michigan. So all the sporting events, we do the national anthem and the Canadian anthem. We do both because we're right there on the border. I mean, think, you know, I'm about an hour from the border. So almost like for Texas, think if we're in the Valley, right? If we're in the Valley, UTRGV down in that area, that's how close I was to Canada. And so, Yes, the Canadian National Anthem. I've heard it a lot. Also a big hockey fan. And so I love me some uh, some Canada National Anthem. But hey, uh, Jalen Celestine, really looking forward to him. And when you look at this roster, yes, the five guards, you think about Langston Love, you think about Jaden Nunn, Jeremy Roach, Rob Wright, VJ Edgecombe. Those five guards, I'll take those five against anybody. Man, it's a good group. It's a, it's a good group of super talented freshmen with older players, a couple that have been in the program, and then Jeremy Roach, a guy who's played in the Final Four. So you got those five guards. And then in the front court, you got Norchad Omir, also played in the Final Four. Josh Ojanwana, who's been in the program a few years. Jalen Celestine now. And then also Jason Esamota, who's a top 50 freshman as well. So, I mean, that's nine right there, and that's a really talented group, I think. On my wish list, as we fill out the roster, would love to see a guy like a Freddie Gillespie, you know, a developmental big who's 6'10 or taller, someone that you can throw in, you know, five to 15 minutes for, you know, different games. Like you think about Hunter Dickinson in Kansas at seven foot tall. You know, I think Norchad can play against him, but there could be an opportunity. You want Norchad, Josh, and another guy to go out there. So I think that's the one piece I would say and I know the, the team is is going to look for something like that but also maybe a developmental guard you know obviously you brought Dale Bonner in a few years ago someone like that that you know could spell if in case of injury or things like that just to provide more depth for the roster but man that's a that's a group there Jerry nine players that I rattle off and that's a top five team right there that's as good as it gets yeah, I think this is a team we've talked about it before, even even before uh, Celestine came in. But I, I think this is a team um, that can make a, you know, potentially can make a deep NCAA tournament uh, run. And and I think, you know, looking at the roster, it, it all depends on how it, you know, blends and how that chemistry develops and all that. But this is a team that could win a national championship based on the talent. This is a team that could win a national championship. Yeah, on paper, it's there. Just got to put in the work, and they'll start that in early June. All right, let's uh, let's keep it moving. So let's focus back in on softball. So Baylor softball, if they're able to play tonight against Ole Miss, weather permitting, a rematch of last year, but Baylor softball, I love the, you know, the selection. I think it's a favorable region. Uh, it's a region that Baylor knows it can win, and you can go back and look no further than earlier this season when it took two out of three in Lafayette against the Raging Cajuns. So it's there. If they play their best softball, it's possible for Baylor to get out of this region. Yeah, and I think, you know, if if you were going to handpick one, um, I don't know that there would be anyone that would be better than this. Now, you know, obviously it would have been nice to be right down the road at A&M or you know, potentially hosting that didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, I think of all the places that you could have gone and then even just the bracket, um, you know, I do worry about Ole Miss cause kind of the same situation as last year, um, where, you know, it's a, you know, kind of a bottom tier sec team, 
uh, but they're dangerous. You know, they, they, they beat us twice last year, eliminated us from the Utah regional. So uh, they've got a lot of transfers, Justin, particularly on the pitching side. So it'll be interesting to see what they bring. Um, yeah, I do like where we are. Uh, I wish we had some of those pieces uh, that we had back when we played Lafayette. You know, if you think back to that time, um, Dariana Orm was even pitching. She had a three inning save against Lafayette. So uh, you, did, you don't have her. You don't have a couple of people in the lineup, including Amber Tobin. Um, so you have some of those pieces missing, but you've also seen some other players develop. Um, so I do think they're playing some of their best softball right now, you know, sweeping those last three conference series like they did and, and winning a tournament game against UCF. So I think it's a team that's in a good place and they go in there, I think with some confidence, Justin. Yeah. And so 2015, Jerry, this is taking it back, uh, nine years ago, I was at the regional working and covering the softball team as they uh, played Louisiana Lafayette at that time, now Louisiana. And that was, yeah, it was super hot. And that was a time where Louisiana, they made it out of that region. But uh, yeah, a situation where, you know, Baylor has the opportunity here. That's all you want to ask for, right? An opportunity. There is a path for them to make it to the super regional and looking forward to watching that all play out tonight at seven o'clock against Ole Miss if weather permits if it doesn't if there's a, a washout today and tomorrow man you're gonna have a lot of games on Sunday and Monday I mean it's gonna be full of softball then I think there's gonna be some windows maybe not tonight but I think there's gonna be some windows on Saturday so maybe you get a game or two in that day and maybe it's just a day delayed you know where you maybe finish up uh, Monday night instead of uh, Sunday. So um, I, I think there's some windows in there where you can play and hopefully they get some games in. Hopefully they even get a game or two in um, today, tonight. So um, yeah, we'll see. And and the other part of that, you know, we talked about the favorable bracket and stuff. I do think it helps, Justin, that they have been at Lafayette. They've been in that atmosphere because you were there. I mean, that's a wild place. Uh, they love their softball, and the fans really get into it. Uh, it can get a little wild. Um, so I think it benefits them that they've been there, they've seen, they've felt that environment. So I think that helps, too, that they've been in there, and, and it's not going to wow them because they've already been there. Yeah, they you know are true to their name, Ragin. Cajuns. That's what the fan base is like. And so, yeah, they, they really support their softball. I mean, that's one of their biggest sports. I mean, obviously football for most teams, but softball's got a strong niche. I would argue that might be their second or third uh, biggest sport. That's the most successful sport they have there in Louisiana. So it will not be easy. Hey, enjoy that 20 minute drive on that uh, over that bridge when you're driving there for 20 minutes on your way to Louisiana. Uh, that is not a comfortable situation because I know I have like final destination nightmares where I fly off the bridge. I'm into the swamp and I'm just surrounded by alligators or crocodiles, whatever it is. Have you literally had this nightmare where you're driving yes. off the bridge? Yes. Well, here's the situation. Every time I don't know what the name of that bridge is. It's yeah. I, it's long words. I don't think it's easy to say. And I'm sure there's uh listeners and viewers out there that know what I'm talking about. If you're driving like the Gulf Shores, Alabama, you have to go through this bridge and it's 20 miles, 20 minutes. And every time I go on that, I feel like it's a, a downpour, a lot of rain, and I'm just trying to truck it and motor through it to get through the bridge. So yes, I have had the nightmare of hitting the, the concrete barrier and flying over that and getting down the swamp area which I don't think is a good spot. You're now in the habitat of some crocodiles, which, by the way, is it crocodiles or alligators? I think in Louisiana, it, I, I don't know what they have there. I, I, obviously, in Florida, it's more the gators. But I don't want to uh, find out. I don't want to find out. No, no. Now, here's, here is, a, unrelated to this, similarly, though, I have a nightmare about the... Um, what do they call the big crossover highways um, where you're like going way above the highway? I have really serious like issue. I, like I slow down every time because um, I got to go like 40, 45 because it really freaks me out. I have that same thing of 
man, what, what if I go off of this thing? I'm not going to survive. Like that's it for me. So yeah, I, I guess I have a similar thing. I'm now you got me worried about the bridge. Dang it. Yeah. And if you, uh, I don't think Jerry, all the years we've known each other, I'm not sure that you've rode with me. I drive really fast. Mac Rhodes, Scott Drew, they drive fast as well. I would put myself up there with them. Uh, I'd like to race those, those guys. Uh, but yes, on my way to Louisiana, it's just a scary thing. You're going to, you're going to now know when you cross that bridge, you'll know it. And you can text me later tonight when you get there safely. Do not text me while you drive over that bridge. Okay. Do not do that. So yeah, when you were talking about motoring, I'm like, dude, it's raining, it's wet roads and stuff. Why would you be like trying to speed your way through that? I know you're trying to get past the bridge, but probably the safe thing to do is slow down and, and take your time to get across the bridge. It's not to speed up and beat everybody across the bridge. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to get to the safe uh, destination, you know, past, past that bridge. I'm just, uh, yeah, and I'm, you got me thinking about what this bridge's name. I, I'll I'll figure it out by the end of the show. Maybe I'll throw it out there. But uh, yes, uh, looking forward to the weekend ahead, and hopefully Jerry gets there safely and enjoys a great uh, softball this weekend. All right, let's uh, Baylor baseball in action this weekend to finish out their regular season. And I'll say, hey, disappointing obviously for them not to make the Big Twelve tournament for the second year in a row. But for this team, hey, you're playing UCF, a, a quality opponent. You're playing at home. Uh, for some of the guys on the team, this will be the last time they throw on their jersey. And I, I saw some quotes from Cole Posey, really impressive, like, you know, kind of a bittersweet moment. And win it for the seniors, right? Go out there, win the series for the seniors, and let's finish out the 2024 season on a positive note. Yeah, Cole is one of those seniors that will be recognized on on Saturday for senior day. And, uh, yeah, he's impressive. Uh, you know, I, I was talking to Max Calderon, the baseball SID the other day. And I'm like, I know guys come, you know, you'll get new guys every year. I don't know that you'll have a better media rep. Uh, I think back to Richard Cunningham. He was kind of that way, like just a unbelievable, great guy, but also, man, he just shines in media. He does so well. I know he was really good on the Sikkim podcast, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, he's an impressive guy. Yeah. He talked about you know, throw it, you know, doing all those things for the last time, you know, even, even things that you may dread, like lifting weights or the early morning workouts, things like that. But then he also talked about um, his dad and seeing him after the game and stuff. And this is, you know, this was kind of the, in his dad's eyes, this is kind of the end of the childhood because this is how they kind of developed a bond growing up of playing catch in the backyard, those kind of things. So, yeah, I, I, you would love to win it for those seniors. You'd love to finish strong. You know, I think back to last year, I know it was a non-conference series against a not very good team, but you swept Cal State, uh, Cal Bakersfield, um, four-game series actually there. So you'd love to have that same kind of finish. UCF obviously has still stuff to play for. They're going to the Big 12 tournament, but they're, you know, maybe they're fighting, you know, for an NCAA bid as well. So they have a lot to play for. Uh, but, man, you'd love to just knock those guys off and uh, send them back to Florida. All right. And then finally, the other golf. Obviously, the men's team advancing to the NCAA championships. And, hey, Jerry, it was close, but it won't matter at the NCAAs because everybody's back to zero. So all you had to do was survive and advance, and that's exactly what they did. Strong performance from Johnny Kiefer. I know he would have loved to win the individual, but, hey, a uh, second place finish is pretty strong for him. And so great job by Baylor men's golf. Yeah, he was 12 under for the week, man. What an unbelievable tournament. And yeah, they really put it together. I think for this tournament, Justin, I mean, uh, like you said, they just barely got in Alabama was really closing fast. At one point they were tied last several holes are tied and, and uh, Johnny actually bogeyed his last hole. Um, that that's what dropped him into a tie. Uh, but then that Alabama's last guy bogeyed his last hole. So that's how Baylor advanced with a one stroke edge over the Crimson Tide. So, uh, yeah, I, I love it that they're going to get a chance to uh, go to nationals again. Um, and, and again, probably playing their best golf. Uh, you know, the women start today as well. So, uh, man, it's it's a great time. Both teams in the nationals. I believe the Baylor Brew said one of 14. I, I think I counted right. I think it's one of 15 schools that sent both programs 
to nationals. So that's impressive too. Yeah, I got a stat for you on top of that. Uh, so Matt Roberts and Josh Fralick working on a graphic, and you see this on social media yesterday, but uh, 2023 and 2024, you think about team schools that advanced to back-to-back -back NCAA championships, just seven that have done it on the men's yeah. and the women's side. So one of seven there, that's a select group. And and quite honestly, you think about Baylor and and just where we've been as a program and no surprise, no surprise when you have two coaches like Mike McGraw and Jay Goebel, the, you know, the, the, uh, the Billy and, and everything, the resources that they have for golf. I mean, this is a school that really uh, appreciates golf and it's great to see every time, you know, you go in May, the end of May, it just brings a smile on your face because you know Baylor has an opportunity to compete for a national championship out there on the golf course. Yeah, and I was there when the women were runners-up in Florida um, in 2015. Um, so you know it's possible. All you got to do is get to match play. Actually, all you have to do is get to the NCAA championship to begin with, but then survive those first three rounds, get to the – there's a 54-hole cut, so you want to get through that to the top 15 – make it to match play, and then anything can happen. You know, you're one of the final eight, and then it's to a point where you win three head-to-head -head matchups and you're the national champion. That's how close they were in 15. Um, you know, certainly this team was, you know, not expected to do that. And particularly midway through the year, I believe four of their first five, the women, four of their first five stroke play tournaments, they were 12th or lower. And they were nowhere in contention to ma even make the NCAA, n maybe not even make an NCAA regional. And here they are, one of the last 30 teams standing. Uh, what a great job by Jay Goble and Carly Ludwig and that team. Well, on that Florida trip that you were at, there were some gators in the the water there. I remember people talking about that, like don't uh, almost Happy Gilmore style where you hit the ball in there, forget it. You're not going to retrieve your ball. But thankfully, Thankfully, this championship is all the way out in California in the San Diego area. There'll be no Gators there. A beautiful weather. I mean, I'm jealous of, of the team. Obviously, they play golf side. You know, they're playing some great tournaments. They they do some stuff, I think, uh, down at Cabo. You know, they'll have that tournament from year to year. But uh, great location and uh, really looking forward to it. And also, got to give a shout out to the Golf Channel. So the last couple days of the tournament, that kind of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for the women and the men, that's when the Golf Channel does its coverage. And, man, they do a great job. It feels like a PGA Tour event. That's how well they cover it. And so you just want to see the Baylor Bears advance that far. Get them on TV. It's great for the brand, great for recruiting. Let's keep this thing moving. Yeah, I remember, you know, again, back in 15, um, Golf Channel was there, and they were, you know, kind of front and center. Um, they're the ones doing the interviews right after, you know, coming off the green and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, that'll be exciting, um, to, to hopefully to get to match play and, and, you know, maybe even advance there. So, uh, pulling for them. And I just think it's great to have both teams there at the NCAA championships. And I think back to maybe the two thousands before football got going, uh, men's and women's tennis were kind of, you know, the ones that and track a little bit too. They were the ones that kind of carried the mantle. I think it's golf now. Like they're the ones that have been the most consistent about not just, you know, making postseason, but making runs. Um, you know, obviously we're a basketball school too. We know that. Um, but I, I love that uh, how well these two programs are playing. And I do think the Billy, you know, has obviously enhanced that as an enhanced recruiting. That's a big, you know, edge for Baylor. Uh, and they get a chance to play a great course here in town too. So, uh, yeah, I think both of them will be very prepared you know, for the moment. All right, that'll do it for today's edition of Inside Baylor Sports, a sport and story production. Thanks for listening. For Jerry Hill, I'm Justin Hoff. Have a great Friday and sick em Bears. Sick em Bears.